The economy is technically no longer in a recession. It is definitely not in a depression, a fact that a year and a half ago you might have won a bet or two by predicting. The economy is actually growing again, and while the jobs numbers still stink, the more economic growth we get, the better chance we'll have of escaping the gaping, horrible maw of the financial meltdown in 2008, the meltdown that almost killed the economy altogether. While an increasing number of people will credit moves taken by the Obama administration and his Treasury Secretary in particular for saving the economy, A, there's still a long way to go, and B, there's still the very awkward fact that Secretary Geithner was in the middle of the financial meltdown when it happened. As president of the New York Fed. In our interview today, Mr. Geithner made a frank appraisal. What's his fault? What's the system's fault? And why you have every right to be stomping mad. From 2003 to 2008, you were the head of the New York Fed. And that was a time um, on Wall Street of untrammeled, <laughs> uh, defying common sense, both risk-taking and deceit that uh, almost destroyed the American economy. And I think some credit due to you and the administration for saving the economy and having that not happen, having this not be a Great Depression. But where were you when it was happening in the, in the first place? What do you wish you had done differently? Excellent question. It, it, important to start with the basic mistake, and it's like in consumer protection. Okay? What we did as a country, and it was a tragic failure of government, is we left vast swaths of the financial system with no oversight. Okay, so pick your example. Fannie Freddie, the major investment banks, Lehman Brothers, Bear Stearns, Countrywide, IndyMac. You can take AIG, any example you want. You can take derivatives, any example you want. And we left vast swaths of the financial without anybody in charge and accountable for overseeing those things. Now, the Fed had a very important responsibility as the supervisor of the nation's largest banks. And the Fed did a very good job, at New York Fed we did a very good job of trying to move early to bring a little bit of order to derivatives markets, to try to make sure that we were inducing these firms, the biggest firms across the world, to try to make sure they were building stronger capital cushions against risk. But we did not do enough. I'm the first to admit, and I know a lot about what our mistakes were in there. I, I would be the first to admit we could have done a better job in this case. We were very aggressive in New York. We made a lot of difference in New York, but we could have gone further. But the big mistake we made as a country was to allow a system to develop where you could get around those rules, build up a huge business with a huge amount of leverage, with no oversight, no transparency, and that's what brought the system to the edge of its knees. If we hadn't made that mistake, that huge mistake, not, made, not moved earlier to put in place these kind of sweeping reforms across the system, this would have been a much more manageable crisis, much less damaging to the American people. So you're right to focus on the Fed, but the Fed was the strongest, the best, most able of those regulators in the United States and around the world. And the mistake the country made it was not provide broader authority to constrain risk-taking across the entire system. If you only do it on one part of the system, you know, what happens is the risk and the bad stuff just moves. Right. It just moves, and that's what happened you over time. More lawless neighborhoods. Yeah. So you had a, you know, a whole parallel banking system merge outside banks, almost as large as what we've done in banks, funded in a very vulnerable way, very vulnerable to runs, with none of the protections and constraints we built after the Great Depression to constrain that kind of risk-taking. That was the big mistake we made. That was not the Fed's mistake. It was not the Fed's mistake, but it, it was that mistake that brought the system to the edge of collapse. Because in those, you know, what happened was we faced, you know, the, just the modern version of a classic run in the financial system. People were not just starting to take the money out of banks, but they withdrew the money as quick as they could from all those other entities. They came down just with forceful, you know, brutal pressure on the rest of the system. And the government didn't move early enough to try to continue that damage. But that's what we're trying to fix in reform. We're trying to make sure we have as much authority to contain those that kind of risk taking that more broadly issue early. Of how much authority you have, though, is where I get hung up, and why I'm still concerned about the Fed now. Why um, I'm still concerned about your record at the Fed, and frankly, you, it, and, Rich, really, you, we, you, you, I'm happy you can go back and look at my record. I can tell you, with a lot of knowledge, of course, the stuff we were right on early, the stuff where we made a lot of difference early. But I can also tell you, and I'm, I, can, I know a lot about this, where the Fed was behind the curve and late. And the best example of that was the Fed did not use its authority to write rules to provide better protection on, for consumers like in mortgages early. The chairman of the Fed has said that openly. I agree with that. That's why we propose to take that authority away from the Fed and to give it to an agency that where the people wake up every day and they think about one thing, which is how to protect consumers. And that, that is actually getting at the crux of my of my worry, which is that it's not that 
just that the Fed didn't have the authority to do all the things that it did in some cases. Uh, and you see it because the Fed has done some things post-crash, pre-new rules it. that it could have done before. And those statutes have changed. It hasn't gotten any new rules. It's just decided to exert some things, pressure that it didn't choose to exert before. And that makes me worry about the overall mindset of the Fed. It is one thing to be a supervising agency of big banks who you get along very well with and they're your board and all of those things. The Fed was much it's, tougher on uh, banks. It's than another banks thing who, to but, be a representative but, of the people right, against the banks. But, but, uh, but judge them by the record, okay? The Fed was much tougher on banks than the other supervisors. That's partly what produced Countrywide. Countrywide did not like being subject to the tough regulation of the Fed, and it chose to become a thrift so it could evade that. The reason why you had so much risk and leverage build up outside the banking system was because the Fed was reasonably tough, much tougher than bank supervisors were in other countries. I'll just give you another example. You know, we messed up a lot of things in this country, and we're living with the cost of that. And we're going to be very aggressive in putting reforms in place. But I'll just to give you an example. In all the major economies around the world, outside the United States, the banking system is dramatically larger as a share of the economy. Their banks are much, banks are much more concentrated. Far fewer banks command, dominate the entire industry. And that's because in those countries, they did not do a good job of constraining risk-taking by banks. We were, we were not good enough at it, but the Fed was better than its supervisory peers, much better than they were internationally. Not good enough, which is why we want to put in place these reforms. On the issue of the bailout, um, why not make help, why not make rescue contingent on reform? Why not say, okay, AIG, here's your $180 billion, or okay, an X firm, here's your X billion dollars, you're not going to give any bonuses for the next five years, at least. You're not going to do any number of other things, and when reform comes around, you're going to be on board. At that point, you've got maximum leverage. Why not? use that leverage at that point. Well, let me just walk back a little bit. You've been very good on this, but let me walk back and tell you what we did when we came into office. You know, when I came into office, we had my predecessor put investments of capital into banks representing, I think, I don't know, 75% of the U.S. banking system. And we moved very quickly to force them to raise private money to replace the public investment dollars so we could get that money back and use it to meet the many challenges we face as a country still. So we were very tough and we moved very quickly, very forcefully, and we've achieved a huge improvement in basic cost of credit, confidence in the system, at much lower cost than anybody anticipated. And that's a very good thing because it means that, again, we have more resources as a country to meet the many challenges we came in, we inherited when we Although came in. Although loans still are not at the level anybody would want them to be. Yeah, abso absolutely. But, but you know, the, if you look at just the cost of borrowing for a municipal government, for a small business, for a family who wants to buy a house, buy a car, put their kids through college, cost of credit has come down very, very dramatically because of what we did. So we have done a very good job of running a very well managed program that is in the interest of the average American, not just because of they care about the cost of credit, but because, again, we face a lot of challenges as a country. We didn't want to see the, their resources used unnecessarily to benefit a bunch I of big banks. I understand how mad people are to see the people, loans not being made and the bonuses being paid. People are incredibly angry, and they should be angry still, because, again, we had a terrible failure of government and judgment in the financial system that caused catastrophic damage to a people who were totally responsible, didn't borrow beyond their means, uh, were careful in their basic judgment, and they're suffering because of the mistakes of a bunch of other people made, and people should be angry. And we hope that anger turns into more political will in the Congress, frankly, to legislate a tough set of reforms. You know, and the President's proposed that we put a $90 billion fee on banks over 10 years so that we can say to the American people that they won't be exposed to a penny of loss from all the terrible things we had to do to step in to rescue this financial system that was burning. So, of course, they're angry. They should be angry about it, and they're right to be angry, and they should be angry until they see they have more confidence that the government's actually going to put in place reforms that will fix what was broken, and they see more traction in all the things we're doing to help bring growth back, bring, bring uh, unemployment down. But the, the bonus issue specifically, and I know it's not central to the structure of the financial system, but it's absolutely central to how much political will there is to get things done in this administration, even on a host of things that have nothing to do with financial reform. Look, the bon you, you're right in the first of all, the bonus thing was important to what caused the crisis, because, you know, we, it was just a crazy system. You know, you could get paid for taking a lot of risk and not be exposed to any risk of losing that compensation if you end up losing your bank a lot of money. It was a crazy way to run a financial system.
system. So it did matter to the crisis. And we think it's very important as part of reforms to change the way these people are compensated. So we proposed again two very simple but you things. Gave them the, you already gave them the rescue money before you proposed no, but, but, the changes. No, again, we, we came into office judges by what we did. Yeah. Okay? I mean, the, my predecessor had to do what he did, which is he had to put, you know, it was, a, it was a panic, we were in the edge of collapse. He had to do the terrible thing of pushing a bunch of capital into the banking system, providing some temporary guarantees. Those emergency actions saved us from the Great Depression. That was necessary. But we came in, we went in, forced them to replace that money, that public money with private money as quickly as possible. They did it very, very quickly. And that is good for us, good for everything you care about, everything you value, because it gives us much more room now to deal with all the many challenges we face. Now, on compensation, though, again, what we're proposing is a very simple thing, which is that firms have to disclose to the public and allow their shareholders to vote on how they're paying their senior executives. And then we're proposing that the supervisors, the people in charge, the police in charge of supervising institutions, actually enforce a set of standards designed to make sure that